Located on the continent of South America, the country Brazil is rich in biodiversity. It is a host to a multitude of fauna and flora which can be found nowhere else on the planet. Because Brazil lies on the equator, it has the best climate and conditions to support a large biodiversity. The species comprised of a multiple of rare and endemic species which total up to 189 birds, 175 mammals, 332 reptiles, 637 amphibians, 337 plants and 1,333 freshwater fish which are endemic to Brazil. With this abundance in biodiversity and endemic species, there is a responsibility placed within Brazil to conserve these species and ensure the survival they are. However, this responsibility is not quite easy. Major land transformers strip down the habitats of these endemic species, making the task of conservation much harder. Also, the major land transformers of Brazil are agriculture and urbanization. In agriculture, the crop lands cover a total of 31% of Brazil's land cover. The main crops of Brazil are sugar cane and coffee. Crops contribute 4.5% to the GBP, whereas agribusiness contributes 26.4% to the GDP. Therefore, the agriculture sector contributes a total of 30.1% to the GDP. Urbanization, one of the major land transformers of Brazil, has had rapid events which have led to the production of informal settlements which host a total of 5,965,000 people. Informal settlements take up land and leads to habitat de degradation as well as increased pollution. Increased pollution will contribute to the unsanitary condition which will harbor diseases and these diseases are seen as a clear threat to Brazil's biodiversity. The loss of habitat as a result of land transformation will cause a proportional decline in biodiversity and endemic species ultimately leaving some species susceptible to extinction. In this video we will build a conservation plan for Brazil which will contribute to the conservation efforts of Brazil's rich biodiversity. This was conducted by downloading ship files from the associated websites. The land cover and admin shape files were downloaded from dvgis.org. Eco regions which were used for the 10 year maps were downloaded from the www.if.org website. Projected areas also used in this analysis was downloaded from protectedplanet.net. The water basins which was also used in the 10 year maps was downloaded from waterbase.org and the 24 targets which were used were downloaded from the IUCN redlist.org. After downloading, the shape files were all processed from shape file to vector and raster files. These were predominantly done through Diva GIS and Terset applications. Another application, ArcView GIS, was used to generate hexagons which were used in the systematic analysis. Once all the files were converted to vector and raster, we could then generate the work maps used to run MOXAM. These maps included the tenure map, the tenure passes map, the ecological planning unit, hexagon planning unit. With these work maps, we could then run MOXAN and thereafter analyze the reserve network solution of MOXAN for both ecological planning unit and hexagon planning unit. As you can see on the distribution of species, we have compiled all 24 endemic species onto one shape file as to illustrate the areas of occupancy. Most of the 24 endemic species area of occupancy is within central Brazil as well as on the eastern coastline, with very few of the species in northwestern regions. Another map that was analyzed and processed through the method was the protected areas. Most of the protected areas are located in the northwestern region of Brazil with small protected areas in the central and coastal regions. Distribution 
of artificial areas were also analyzed and processed. This coincides with that of the conservation targets. Most of the artificial land cover is moving offshore inland with least amount of urbanization in the northwestern regions. Central and coastal distributions of species coincides with that of the artificial areas. This puts strains on conservation of species as well as maintaining the species habitat from land transformation. With the protected areas and the distribution of artificial areas, we could then construct the tenure map and tenure passes map. The tenure passes map is a modified tenure map created for evaluating the success of the current reserve work. In this case, the tenure passes map is used to determine whether the current protected area network is protecting Brazil's endemic diversity. The tenure map is used to select new reserve areas to meet the conservation targets. based on the results of the current reserve areas using the ecological niche model clearly shows a tremendous lack of protecting the majority of the species with a total of 23 unprotected endemic species of the 25 the new reserve plans using the ecological niche model however shows a significant change with a total of two unprotected endemic species there is also a vast difference in the total area of the current reserve and the new proposed reserve the area of the proposed reserve is 6,156,542 square kilometers, whereas the current reserve has a much smaller 1,799,939 square kilometers. The same relationship is present between the current and proposed reserves and Camber, which are observed when using the systematic approach. The results of the current reserve areas illustrate the majority of the species is unprotected with 19 of the 25 species unprotected. The proposed reserve has a better result with only one endemic species unprotected. The size of the proposed reserve is 5,078,520 square kilometers whereas the current reserve is 2,000,000 565,367 square kilometers. Here we also observe a statistical summary of the results for both the systematic and ecological niche planning units for current and proposed reserves. The current reserve areas for both ecological and systematic planning units are located in the northwestern regions of Brazil. This is in the region of almost no artificial land uses, thus it is better to plan there. With reduced disturbance and anthropogenic factors, the habitat in the northwestern regions are untouched and biodiversity remains undisturbed. However, this comes at a disadvantage to most of the endemic species which are located in central and coastal regions of Brazil. This is supported by a low number of protected species, both for respective planning units. The proposed reserves for both types of planning units are distributed across most of Brazil with reduced areas in the northern regions. Most of the species, as analyzed, as analyzed earlier, are located in the central and coastal regions. This is the same regions of artificial land uses. Thus, there is an increased disturbance and anthropogenic factors that cause damage and fragmented habitats. Because of the fragmented habitats being located between the vast artificial land cover, this makes the task of generating new reserves tricky. The ecological planning units as well as the systematic planning units have large areas that overlap both fragmented habitats as well as the surrounding artificial areas and thus makes the reserve appear within artificial areas. But this is not the case. The small fragmented areas only occupy small areas of the planning units. An alternative to this problem is to reduce the areas of both respective planning units and <coughs> this reduced area of planning units will pinpoint the habitats which are surrounded by the large artificial areas making the proposed planning units much clearer. However, there is a downfall 
in the proposal of using a multitude of fragmented habitats as reserves. The costs of maintaining multiple fragmented reserves are higher than that of fewer larger reserves. Another factor that poses against fragmented reserves is the fact that they are more at risk to anthropogenic factors and thus needs constant control and regulation against these factors to reduce further damage to the habitat or ultimately to reduce the possibility of extinction. This leaves limited decisions as to conserve these fragmented reserves, which are host to endemic species, or to carry on with land transformation and put these endemic species at risk. Possible decisions to conserve the fragmented habitats as reserves is to reduce anthropogenic effects and rehabilitate surrounding areas. However, this will reduce areas of artificial land and thus deprive the nation of agricultural land and area for development. Proposed reserves in the northern regions of Brazil have no direct anthropogenic act factors acting upon it, coupled with its larger area, makes it suitable as a reserve. However, only few of the endemic species are found in the northern regions. It is re recommended that the planning unit areas are decreased as to have more accurate outlines of the proposed reserves. It is also recommended to use an increased number of targets, which will also assist in establishing better reserves. Based on the current artificial land cover, we can conclude that habitats of endemics in the central and coastal regions are being reduced. This poses threats such as possible extinctions to endemic species. This stresses the fact that there is a need for conservation reserves in these regions. With the proposed reserves, that was analyzed, we can assign reserves to these regions, even though it comes at a huge cost to the country, but a huge plus for conservation of its endemic species. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy your day further.